My OneNote friends, it's time. The old Windows 10 app is being deprecated and made read-only, and it's time to move to the new modern OneNote that has lots of new capabilities and features. I'm here to help make sure when you land in the new app, you can get yourself situated and learn about all the great new tips and tricks that are way better than the old Windows 10 app. Now, there are tips and tricks for all sorts of OneNote users, so everyone should check out this video. And also, earlier this week, I was at the OneNote for Windows 10 service, and I said a few words. I'll show them before we get into the video. We're gathered today to say goodbye to OneNote for Windows 10, a faithful companion that always opened in purple, even when it sometimes refused to sync. It captured our lecture notes, our shopping list. Now, for commercial and consumer customers, OneNote for Windows 10 is going to go into a read-only state on October 15th, and all support will be ending. Late breaking news, I work at Microsoft and I spoke to the OneNote team, and I also work on the education product team. Because many students and educators are in the middle of a semester, OneNote for Windows 10 will not go read-only until a later date that's not in the middle of the semester for EDU-specific licensed customers. So that's late breaking news. Before we get into the specific demos, many of you might say, where can I find more information about the migration of OneNote for Windows 10? Here's a web page that covers a lot of this. I have the link in the description. There's also an ultimate guide about how this works and how you can actually migrate. That's also a link in the description. And there's another here that is for IT admins. In terms of getting the new OneNote, the first place you can go is the Microsoft Store. And so if you search for OneNote, it's here in the store. You can also go to OneNote.com and download it there. And if you're a corporate user, you just sign into Microsoft365.com, that's formerly office.com. And if you go to apps right here, you can go and install the apps and you can download all the desktop apps and OneNote is part of that. I'm here in OneNote and first off, look, it looks very similar to OneNote to Windows 10. This is the single line ribbon toolbar up top. You can make that classic ribbon and make it really big, or you can go like this and go into full screen mode so very similar, you actually have more options. If you wanna to get to all of your stuff, it's right there. We'll go back to single line mode here. The number one complaint I get from people coming from Windows 10 into the new OneNote is they don't know that you can do vertical tabs. And look at this, it looks just like OneNote for Windows 10. But now you have flexibility. So if I go to the view here and tabs layout, I can choose horizontal tabs. This is kind of old school OneNote here. And I can unpin the notebooks like that. I can drop them down and pin them. I can go back and choose vertical tabs. Now I'm gonna show even more flexibility you have in the new OneNote. So go to tabs layout and choose horizontal. And now I'm gonna to go to file and then options and look at display. You can say uncheck move page list to the left. We'll uncheck and show notebook list on the left. And I'll hit okay and watch what happens. Great, so if you're a left-hander or a right-hander, you have so much flexibility. You can do all these things very easily. I'm gonna go back and set it to how it was, and now we're back. The next complaint I've heard a lot is about sorting pages. Well, it turns out OneNote for Windows can sort pages just like the old OneNote for Windows 10. Let's say I've got a bunch of pages here, and I just wanna sort them. So we'll hit sort. I can go alphabetical, lapse outline, the C is at the top, it's all alphabetical. I can do date created, which is super handy. This is the date by which the pages were created. Even date modified. So a lot of really nice options here in terms of your sorting. I'm just gonna turn that off and now it puts it back to the way it was. So page sorting is there. The next question you might have is, well, what about inking and drawing tools? They were great in OneNote for Windows 10. All those features have been brought into OneNote for Windows. So all the pens right here, and you can do things like, if you ever remember rainbow inking and galaxy mode, those are all here. Let's say I wanna have my galaxy ink, I can do that. I've got the laser pointer, which is really nice. I can do custom pens and add different things. We've recently added a fountain pen. So we've got a nice fountain pen. Maybe I wanna have that here and it's very nice fountain pen. So all those same options. We've even added the ruler. That was in one up for Windows 10. And then we also have some of the inking and shape options. So I'm gonna actually expand this so you can see the labels. Automatic shapes. So if I go here and I draw kind of a weak looking circle, it automatically makes it a circle. Same thing, go down here and make a triangle. The other nice thing is if I go and I select here, click on a shape and grab this, and now I can actually rotate any shape that I've drawn. So I can rotate triangles or squares. Circles probably aren't so interesting, but you get the idea. We have Ink to Math and also the full math assistant. 
This is the same math assistant that you see in OneUp for Windows 10, and this is really great. It has all the same features, even the built-in immersive reader. And then we also have Ink Replay. So if you remember Ink Replay, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna write my name. So now what I do is I just select my name, hit Ink Replay, and it plays it back. I can pause it, I can do it again, same as the Windows 10 app. Another nice feature that's in the new OneNote is dark mode. So really easily I can go and switch the background. Now I've got dark mode. Click switch background to turn it off. And the last one up for Windows 10 feature that many folks don't think is in the new OneNote, but it is recently, is the Class Notebook Toolbar. And this is only for educators, but I'll show it. On the File menu, go down to Options, and on the General tab, Enable Class Notebook. Check that, hit OK, and the Class Notebook appears. That toolbar, I can distribute pages, distribute sections. You have to be in a Class Notebook, which is a specialized education notebook. So if you're not in education, don't worry about this. But for the teachers out there, this is the full class notebook toolbar you can enable and disable. And we'll turn it off again. So that covers all the features for the OneNote Windows 10 users that you think might not exist in the new app, but do. But now we're gonna switch. I'm gonna show all the really cool features that you didn't have in OneNote for Windows 10. And for you longtime OneNote users, there's a bunch of new stuff in here that many of you might not be aware of. And I'm gonna show a bunch of really cool tips and tricks. So let's get going on those. Now the first one is OneNote for Windows 10 had super slow OCR, optical character recognition. OneNote is super fast. You just paste an image, right click, choose copy text from picture, and then choose paste, and it extracts it immediately. In OneNote for Windows 10, you'd sometimes have to wait 12 hours or 24 hours for that service to run. Now OCR is local and it runs super fast. The next one that I had a lot of questions about for OneNote Windows 10 and we never were going to be able to add it is loop support. Loop are real-time collaborative components that I can now insert into OneNote, I can paste into OneNote, and I can use in other apps like Outlook and Teams and Word. So I'm gonna go here and insert this real-time loop component. On the Insert tab, choose Loop Components, and I have lots of options. Table, Checklist, Bulleted List, Voting Table, Progress Tracker, Kanban Board. So I can choose Kanban Board here, and now I've got a fully usable and real-time collaborative Kanban board. I'm gonna add a work owner. I'll add myself, but you can assign this to different people. I can select a date. I can add cards. Really easy to do, and this is fully collaborative. So I can say copy component. I can see who has access, so I can make this accessible to anyone. And if I copy this component here, I can put it anywhere. I'm here in Outlook, and I'm just gonna paste that link to that loop component and that entire Kanban board is now in an Outlook email. And again, I can put this in Teams, I can put it into Word, and Loop can be shared and collaborated on real time anywhere. That was a sample Kanban board, but I can go down here and I can say insert Loop component. I can put in a voting table, I can put in a task list. So many options for these real time collaborative components. I'll let you explore and play around, but this is way better than anything else that was in OneNote for Windows 10. Next up is Copilot Chat, and I'll go to the Home tab. We just announced that we're adding Copilot Chat into Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and OneNote. And you're gonna see on the Home tab, there's gonna be this Copilot icon, and this is for any of our OneNote M365 customers. This isn't quite wired up for the demo, but for example, I'll show how this works in PowerPoint. So in PowerPoint, to show how this works, I've got this Copilot icon here. I open it up, and this is the full Copilot Chat, and I can now have Copilot chat, look at the actual content pane and do something. So I can say, create an image of Bill Lumberg with a TPS report and red stapler and hit go. And Copilot's gonna generate that image. Okay, so I've got my little Bill Lumberg there with the red stapler. I can copy the image or even just hit plus and add it right to my slide. So you can do things like that where the actual Copilot is looking at the page. I can even say things like, make speaker notes. So Copilot Chat is rolling out now to Microsoft 365 Insiders. This is in October of 2025, but that's a huge benefit to have AI attached right into your OneNote. Next up is supercharged meeting details with Teams integration. So this is way better than the meeting details of the past few years or even a decade ago. So on the Home tab, choose Meeting Details, and this brings up meetings in my calendar. Now I actually attended a meeting earlier this week and I'm gonna pull in right here the BET V Team Planning Series. And if I click this, because it was a Teams meeting, 
it has things like the recording. So it was recorded, now that's embedded right here. It has all the participants. What was the meeting collateral? There was a deck in there, there were AI suggested tasks, there were loop collaborative notes. So all these things were all captured automatically and I can pull that right in. I've got an end to end deeper dive with OneNote and Teams and all the new meeting details and that's linked in the upper right if you wanna explore more. Another new update in the modern OneNote is that Merge Table Cells is finally supported. People have been asking about this for literally over a decade. So I've got a nice table here. If I select it and go to Table, there's this Merge and Split Cells. So I will select multiple cells and I wanna merge this and now it's merged into one single cell. And if I wanna undo that, I just do Split Cells and it goes back to normal. This also works for vertical cells. So I select those two and choose Merge Cells and now it is merged together. Image cropping is in OneNote for Windows, so if I select an image here, right click, I can choose crop. Really easy to just crop an image like that. Done. Forward links only exist in the modern OneNote, and this allows you to just select a list in an outline here, right click, and choose link to pages, and watch what happens to my page list. Bang, it created pages that are blank for each of those outline items. And they're all dotted now, these are the new pages. And now if I click work on a Saturday, it jumps me there. It's almost like a little table of contents that it blasts out. So you can create entire sets of pages just based on an outline. One of my favorite new features is ink sticking to PDFs or images. So in this case, if I have an image right here, I'm gonna draw on top of it. I'll get my galaxy ink and we will circle Bill's head just like that. In my automatic shapes, it makes really nice. Now, a lot of times people would say, I wish that I could have the ink stick with that image automatically. So when I select this, watch what happens. The ink sticks to the image. I didn't have to lasso select everything. That's a huge time-saving improvement. If you print to PDF inside of OneNote, it's the same thing. And I'll show that in just a little bit, how you can change that. But ink sticks to images and PDFs. Another big benefit of OneNote is that you can export and save notebooks locally. With the OneNote Windows 10 app, everything was always saved in the cloud. But in this case, if I go to the file menu, I can go to save a copy. And now what I can do is I can export and save a copy. So I'm gonna save it to my PC and I could give a notebook name and I could save that locally on my PC. Other things I could do is export. So now I can export an entire notebook. I can do a page, a section, or a notebook. And I can save that notebook as a OneNote package, as a PDF, XPS or a single web page. So it's really nice in that I can take stuff off of my OneNote and save it locally. I can save that .1PKG, which is kind of like a zip file, and I can open it up elsewhere. We had tons of asks over the years to be able to support that in OneNote for Windows 10. Dictation is also supported in the new OneNote. On the Home tab, I have a Dictate button right here. Now I am dictating right onto the page. So it's super easy. I can move my little dictate toolbar around anywhere so I can click and drag, hit settings. I can change all these different languages, filter sensitive phrases, auto punctuation, etc. Tools options in the new OneNote has a lot of flexibility. So if I go to the file menu and down to options, under general, there's a bunch of things you can change. Under display, we showed some of those earlier, create all rule lines, docking, OneNote for quick notes. Proofing tools, there are Copilot options if you're a subscriber to Copilot. Syncing is a big one. And then save and backup. This is really powerful because you can set backups in lots of different locations, all the different backups and tunings and how often, optimizing files, cache location, uh, meeting details, sending things into OneNote and where you can send them from. All sorts of really interesting stuff here that you can explore. And under advanced, they have some really cool ones down here that I'll show later about printouts and having ink stick to them and going to the background. But explore tools options. Page templates are another really great feature in the new OneNote that the old OneNote for Windows 10 didn't really do well. So if I go to the Insert tab, over on Page Templates here, I'm gonna click this, and it opens up my page templates. So there are a ton of options in here that I can explore. Business, decorative, so maybe I do Project Overview, and now I've got a really nice template here, chock full of stuff. Now the thing that a lot of people don't know also is that you can save existing pages as a new template. So what I'm gonna do is go back to one of my pages. This looks like a really nice template that I want, Bill Lumberg with a nice Galaxy ink. 
So down here, I can say save current page as template. We'll call this the Lumberg special. I could even set that as the default in the new page for current sections. I'm not gonna set this as the default, but I will save it. And now under my templates, I have the Lumberg special. So let's say I'm down here. I wanna create a new Lumberg special. I would open up page templates, open up my templates and click it. There's the new Lumberg special. Another big complaint about OneNote for Windows 10 is that you couldn't set background pages when they printed into OneNote. So I wanna print something that has multiple images and set it automatically to the background so I can ink on top of it. So if I go to the file menu, choose options, then go to advanced, we're gonna scroll down and there's a check here, automatically set inserted file printouts in the background. I'll hit okay. And now if I'm gonna go file printout here, I'll select a PowerPoint deck and insert this. So very quickly, I've got my PowerPoint deck and each slide is here. Now what's nice is when I click on this, note that I can't move it, it's locked. So now if I just wanna ink immediately on top of that, I can go and scribble. So it automatically locks those printed images, in this case, slide images, right to the page without me having to diddle with the inking and the pictures moving all around. From a security and compliance perspective, we've recently announced on the roadmap that we're adding this into OneNote. So up at the top, you can see security and compliance labels. This is for corporations that wanna lock down their OneNotes. This has been a top request for years. OneNote for Windows 10 doesn't support it. So this is confidential. I can set it to be public or general, all that good stuff that already is supported in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Now this is coming to OneNote. Another nice feature that's been in the new OneNote for quite a while, but never in OneNote for Windows 10 is recent edits. And this lets you get caught up on what you've missed. So if I go to history and I choose recent edits, let's say I wanna look at the last 14 days. On the right hand side, this pane opens up and here are all the pages that have been touched today or last week. I can sort that so I wanna see, oh, what was merged table sales? Everything highlighted in yellow was new content. So I can very easily see what was happening. And I can search in this notebook, this section, all notebooks, tons of options. I can even find by author. So if I wanna sort by authors, I was the one who was doing all the editing, but if there was a shared notebook, I could see all the different people, who changed what, what content was added, and everything is always highlighted in yellow like that. So it's really easy to keep up and see what's going on. The final feature I'll show, and this is one that most people don't know about, is OneTastic. And OneTastic is a free add-in that adds hundreds of features into OneNote. It uses the extensibility model, and it was created by a OneNote engineer. I actually know the guy. So I'll show the site. The URL is getonetastic.com. Now what you can do, check out Macroland, and Macroland are all the different features that you have with OneTastic. It's amazing, there's hundreds and hundreds. Sorting sections, daily planner page if you wanted a calendar, text to table, blackboard page, uppercase, perfect printouts. There are so many features in here, it blows my mind. Adding comments, select to do's, set notebook colors, and so what you do is you just download and you can get the 32-bit or the 64-bit. We'll just quickly download and install. Okay, OneTastic is installed. So things like launch one calendar, you've got tools and settings, but macros are basically the features. And so I'm gonna choose download macros. So these are all the macros or the features. There are 700 plus features in Macroland. One of the favorites out here, search and replace, the weekly planners, table of contents. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff in here. Now, some of these are free, depending on how many you use, there could be a cost, like OneTastic has a free mode and a premium mode. I'm not gonna go through all the details, but I will just say, in terms of the number of features that this tool has, it's pretty mind blowing. So I encourage you to explore it. Well, hopefully that gives you a sense of how much better the new OneNote is compared to OneNote for Windows 10. Well, it's sad to say goodbye to our good friend OneNote in Windows 10. The new OneNote is pretty incredible. It's so incredible, I was inspired to have an AI video express the new OneNote and the dawn of excitement. The rising purple sun, every thought together one by one. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.